Hey everybody, it's Ben Zentera from Solar Reviews. You know, one of my favorite things about home solar panels is that they can be a great financial investment. Adding solar panels to your home means that you'll be able to offset a portion of your electric bills and save money every month. All those savings eventually add up and one day your solar panels will pay for themselves. The time it takes to completely pay off your initial investment in solar through incentives and electric bill savings is what's known as the solar panel payback period. Right now, the average payback period for solar panels in America is between five and 15 years. That's a pretty wide range, and you might be wondering why it's so different. Well, to put it simply, it has a lot to do with the state you live in and the utility company that you're connected to. But let's dig a little deeper and provide you with a better explanation. We'll take you step by step to learn how you can gauge the amount of time it takes for your solar panels to pay for themselves. Let's get into it. There are a few factors that will affect the amount of time it takes to pay back your solar investment. Your home's average electricity usage, the total cost of the solar system that you need, upfront and ongoing incentives that are offered in your area, the amount of energy produced by your solar panels, and how much you pay for electricity. Let's take a look at a few examples and plug in some numbers. Step one is to find out the average electricity needs for your home. The first step to figuring out your solar payback is to determine how big your solar system should be. To do that, you start by looking at your home's electricity usage over the course of a year. We have an entire video that breaks down the math of calculating how many solar panels you need for your home, and we'll link that right there. For now, let's just give you an example. Let's say a home in Colorado uses about 9,500 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. Each kilowatt of solar in Colorado generates about 1,575 kilowatt hours annually. Take the 9,500 kilowatt hours needed and divide it by 1,575 and you get about six. Now that means you'd need a system size of about six kilowatts to make enough energy to offset the home's total energy needs in a year. By the way, we're just using Colorado as an example here. Your state will have its own set of numbers related to solar energy production and the cost of electricity. But step two is to find out the total cost of your solar system before incentives. Now right now in America, you can expect to spend an average of eighteen to twenty thousand dollars on an average sized solar installation before any incentives are considered. You can find out exactly how much a solar system would cost for your home by looking at solar quotes from installation companies. Let's just say that six kilowatt solar installation from step one totaled eighteen thousand dollars. Step three is to find out what incentives and rebates are offered in your area. Any tax paying homeowner in America who pays for a solar installation is eligible for the 30 percent federal solar tax credit. So that 30% credit for an $18,000 system would be around $5,400, bringing the net cost after one year to roughly $12,600. Depending on your state and utility company, other incentives may be available for you that could be combined with the federal credit and reduce that cost even more. For example, Colorado has incentives for low-income homeowners and for adding battery storage. But we're keeping things simple here, so we'll assume you don't qualify for those additional incentives. Step four is to figure out the energy production from your solar panels. We have another video linked right here that further explains how to figure this number out. But for most people, this number should be about the same as your total annual usage, which remember we discovered back in step one. Factors that could cause it to be different include space limitations on your roof, unavoidable shade, or a roof that doesn't point directly south if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. But to make things simple, let's assume that our example home doesn't have any of these concerns. If you take that 1,575 kilowatt hours of electricity each kilowatt of solar panels can produce in a year and multiply it by the six kilowatt system size, that gives you 9,450 kilowatt hours of annual solar production. Step five is to figure out the cost of electricity and the rate of increase in that cost. This is the last step to determine your solar payback period, but it can also be the most complicated because you may have to account for two things, the change in electricity rates over time and the fact that not all states offer net metering. And that means some of the solar energy your panels make will be sent back to the grid and credited at a lower rate than the solar energy you use in your home. Luckily, people in Colorado who are served by XL Energy do get full retail rate net metering. So that makes our calculation way easier. At a retail cost of about 14.3 cents per kilowatt hour, the 9,450 kilowatt hours of annual production from our example solar system would save about $1,350 in the first year. To keep things simple here, we're going to calculate the payback period 
without an annual increase in electricity rates. And this is actually a fairly smart thing to do because it gives you a conservative estimate of payback period. In reality, prices tend to go up about 3% per year, which will shorten the payback period just a bit, but generally not enough to make a huge difference. Now for the grand finale. Take that $12,600 cost of the solar panels after the tax credit and divide it by $1,350 per year. That leaves you with a payback period of roughly nine years and four months. That's it, we did it. Please keep in mind though that this is just an example and everyone's exact payback period time will be different based on the factors mentioned earlier. Depending on your situation, you could have your system paid off in as little as five years. Now this applies to people in states with good incentives and very high energy prices like Massachusetts and New York. People in places with low energy prices and fewer incentives like Mississippi or Alabama will have a much longer payback. The one thing I really hope we've done here is to give you a better understanding of how to calculate payback period. So when you get quotes from solar installers, you can think critically about where they get their numbers and do your own calculations to verify that their estimates are correct. Also, solarreviews.com has a calculator where you can find all of this information in one place. Click the link below to get started. And I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you and trust me, it can get confusing. That's the good thing about YouTube. You can watch this video and our other videos again until it makes sense. Or add a comment below and we'll do our best to answer any questions you might have. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. If you still don't mind seeing my face a little more, check out one of our other videos that will pop up on screen in just one second.